And I wakai ana mana ana reo tēnā koutou katoa. Can I thank you very much for joining us um, here for breakfast? I know many of you have travelled from far and wide. Usually when I ask the question, actually, who's travelled the most, it's Bill English from Winton. Uh, so nice to see you here today, Bill. Uh, however, we've got uh, Tag Oil from Canada who's come all the way um, from there this morning for breakfast, so welcome to them, and some others from far and wide. So enjoy your company and uh, as part of this launch today. Uh, as Minister of Energy and Resources, I'm constantly uh, reminded how fortunate we are to have an abundance of energy, um, of minerals and of resources. For electricity, for generation, for example, um, we've got coal, um, if we wanted to. Uh, we've got gas, geothermal, wind, solar. Uh, we've got hydro, of course. Um, we've got tidal and we've got wave power. But apart from that, we're struggling. And it, and it sort of shows you why, you know, when people say to me, and there's many out there that write me letters about, you know, why don't we have nuclear power in New Zealand? The fact is we don't need to. Um, we're the lucky country with all those resources. Coal, gas, wind, geothermal, solar, tidal, wave and wind. I mean it's quite uh, stunning when you think about it. And these provide us with unique opportunities to grow our economy, um, to ensure we have a secure supply of affordable energy and also respond to the global challenges of climate change. In the oil and gas sector, uh, which is also a very fortunate area for us, um, that's contributing to our economy significantly. It's our fourth largest export and indirectly supports about uh, 7,500 uh, jobs. The sector's invested $7 billion in the past five years here and contribute about $2.5 uh, billion to our economy. In fact, the Greens claim that they pay no tax. They pay about 42% uh, tax here in this country. That's that's corporate taxes combined with royalties, about four, three to four hundred million of each a year, about seven hundred million dollars a year. It's very, very significant, and that I can tell you can build an awful lot of roads and an awful lot of schools and an awful lot of of hospitals. Uh, as significant as these figures are, New Zealand's oil and gas uh, production is actually only in one basin, um, the Taranaki Basin. And we have 18 basins across New Zealand, 17 of which we don't draw oil and gas from. And Nikki, that are here today, can I thank you for the fact that your track record um, over there in that region, working alongside dairying and tourism, has made it much easier for me to go to the east coast and go down to um, Canterbury and go down to Otago and go up to my home region of Northland and say to them, well look, if they can do it successfully in Taranaki for a hundred years, have the lowest unemployment of any region and the highest average wage, why can't we have it here? And it's all because you've been performing operators and you continue to lift your game and you need to continue to lift your game. So thank you for your contribution. So at the moment we are lightly um, explored. Uh, the government's got a critical role to play in ensuring that we realise um, our potential uh, while pro protecting our environment and our people and that's why we've got this focus, um, significant focus on raising the environmental and health and safety standards across the sector. We've also moved to the exclusive use of the annual block offer for oil and gas explorations and the idea there is that each year our companies, investors across the world and also domestically will understand um, that we open up the conversation about a block offer in April um, we go through that offer through September and I make an announcement in December of who's won the bids and then we start again the following April. So this last 12 uh, months over block offer 2012 we've gone through that process and later this morning I'll be announcing the outcome of block offer 2012 and awarding successful bidders their permits. The outcome, I must say, is better than we ever expected, although we knew that interest in New Zealand um, was pretty high because it had been registered with me, other ministers, and of course New Zealand Petroleum and Minerals. 
The strong interest in Blockoff for 2012 um, proves that New Zealand is a serious investment destination for oil and gas explorers. I must say when I started the process in April, when we put out the 23 blocks, I was concerned that we were just going to get one bid and we've done much uh, better than that. Um, block Offer 2012 has been a success. Um, we expect 2013 to be um, more successful. Uh, this summer is actually very quiet in terms of uh, drilling and exploration wells, but 2014 and 15 will be the strongest, uh, most strong activity we've seen in New Zealand ever. So of the 23 blocks that we put out in 2012, we had uh, 13 uh, bids on 13 blocks by 24 companies, which shows you how competitive it was. In fact, one block of New Zealand got uh, four bids. We've accepted 10 of those. And we've, uh, we were also delighted to see the international interest. So we had interest from companies uh, in Australia, uh, in Canada, in Austria. We had interest from Brussels. Uh, we had uh, interest uh, from all around the world. Uh, and most importantly, of course, we had domestic interest with a large number of companies in New Zealand here also bidding. So to see the international interest in New Zealand is quite stunning, particularly um, where bidding worldwide is very, very competitive and we are in an isolated nation where it does cost a lot of money to invest uh, here. So we are committed to ensuring um, that this uh, offer process goes in year in and year out. Later this morning I will be announcing the, officers, uh, the, the winners of those um, bids in the Parliament. Um, our, extensive, uh, our extensive renewable uh, resources are also uh, being promoted. That's an important part of our economic growth uh, in the future as businesses capitalise on selling goods produced using energy sources of a low carbon footprint. Uh, let me make sure that that's clear. In fact, New Zealand in terms of renewable energy is second or third in the world. About 77% of our electricity is generated by renewables. Uh, they offer a win-win, but that doesn't mean to say that we should ignore our resources that are in the ground, because as the world moves to a low carbon future, they're still driving trucks, and they're still driving cars, and they're still are commuting on trains and in ships and aeroplanes. And the fact of the matter is we have a resource in here in New Zealand which can create uh, real jobs and promote our country as an investment destination. So thank you again for joining us uh, here this morning. As New Zealanders, we're very lucky to have so many opportunities to grow our com economy. We're, we are the lucky country when it comes to physical um, resources, and we are in a fortunate position that we can offer our, our domestic um, residents, as well as the international stage, a secure supply of affordable energy. Nō rera, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora.